children are mentally handicapped. They are of all ages. There are more than 26,000 such children in England and Wales alone. How can we best look after these children? Is it possible to develop their potentialities? To arouse them? To give them some interest in life? There is a clue in the fact that mentally handicapped children who live at home in their families are usually less retarded than those brought up in institutions. But there are some 8,500 mentally subnormal children who have to live in large hospitals. The Fountain Hospital in South London is a good example of such an institution. It is staffed by a large number of doctors, nurses, teachers, scientists and administrators. Ward 1 is the home of 40 young children, but a home with the inevitable routine of a big hospital. The children must be got up in the morning, potted, washed, dressed and fed. An endless repetition of routine, toileting, washing, feeding, and so on and on and on. The nurses work hard, but they're ruled by the clock, and they've adopted methods which save time. For instance, it is quicker to carry a child than to help him to walk. It is quicker to dress him than to let him try to do it himself. Thus, children have little chance of developing their abilities, of gaining even personal independence. Instead of activity and learning being encouraged, the children are often left to sit motionless, waiting for the next thing to happen. No one talks to them. In Ward 9, there are 60 children, all boys. Ward life and education are separate. These children have come from their wards to the training center where teachers take over. Here in this experimental class is plenty of equipment and the children can choose their activities. But there is too little space. In other classes the approach is formal. Bead threading is liked by most children. are run to a timetable.